Hi, in this session we are going to talk about vectors. We're going to talk about uh, one method of adding vectors and we'll also learn how to find components of a vector, specifically in two dimensions. We will also just scratch the surface in talking about uh, motion and we'll just start by talking about distance and displacement. So this is one way we add vectors. It's called uh, a geometrical way to add vectors. So it's really just using a picture. So we have three vectors shown in this picture here. There's a two-dimensional uh, coordinate system, x, y coordinate system, with a vector a, a vector b, and a vector c. We're not going to worry about the vector c right today, but we'll get to that one later. So we'll just focus on a and b. So how do we find the sum of these two vectors a and b. So the method we're going to use is called the tail to tip method. So what you do is you take one vector and you just put it down there and then you take your second vector and you move its tail to the tip of the first vector. The tip is where the arrowhead is. We're going to do this for two vectors, but you can do it for as many vectors as you want. And then you draw the resultant vector always from the tail of the very first vector to the tip of the last vector. So let's just see how this works. So now we've gotten rid of C from our picture, so we just have A and B, but we actually have now two copies of A and two copies of B and two resultant vectors, which are the result of adding the vectors A and B. So what we're really showing here is two different ways to add these vectors A and B. They're completely equivalent. Okay, so first we're going to focus on the bottom triangle. Now A is in the position it was shown before. B was actually uh, in the, its original position was in the upper triangle as it is in the upper triangle now. So what we've done is we've taken B and we've moved it. So first we've laid A down. The tip of A is where the arrowhead of A is. The tail of A is at the other end, the left end. Then we've moved B, so its tail is on the tip of A. So that's the tail to tip method. If we had another vector we wanted to add, we would move its tail to the tip of B and draw the result in all the way from the tail of A to the tip of the third vector. In this case, we're already finished. Okay, so we have this lower triangle. We go from the tail of the very first vector, that's vector A, to the tip of the last vector, that's vector B. That's our resultant vector, labeled here as R. And so we have a resultant which is two units, positive two units, in the y direction. Now it doesn't matter what order you add these vectors in. So we did first A and then B in the lower triangle. Well, let's do the reverse. So in the upper triangle, we leave B in its original position, and we slide A up from its original position so that the tail of A lies on the tip of vector B. So now, in the upper triangle, our resultant vector goes from the tail of the first vector, that's vector B, to the tip of the last vector, that's the tip of vector A we have a resultant vector. Let's compare it to the resultant vector in the lower triangle. Let's see now. Both these vectors have no x components. They don't go left or right. They both go two units vertically up in the positive y direction. So these resultant vectors are exactly the same. It doesn't matter that they're displaced from one another. The vector has these two vectors two resultant vectors, have the same magnitude and the same direction. So they are the same vector. Okay, so that's how you add vectors geometrically. And it doesn't matter what order you do them in. Let's talk about vector components. So generally what we do is we take a right angle triangle and we put the vector on the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle and then we use the other sides to get what we call the components. This is in two dimensions. So here's an example. 
Here's a vector v, and it's drawn in an xy coordinate system. So this vector v, it's pointing a little bit down and a little bit to the right. So really what we want to know is how much of our vector is in the x direction, how much is left or right, how much is vertical in the y direction. So then we draw this right angle triangle, which you see off to the right. So you take your vector, you make sure it's on the hypotenuse of your right angle triangle. The other two sides, one is parallel to the x-axis. In fact, in this case, it lies right on the x-axis. The other side, where vy is labeled, is parallel to the y-axis. So we can see that the x component of this vector v is in the positive x direction. The y component of this vector v is in the negative y direction. Now what we want to do is be quantitative about this. Okay, so that, in words there, just summarizes what I just said. You make V the hypotenuse, the other two sides are parallel to the coordinate axes. So now we want to know exactly, numerically, what is Vx? How big is Vx? How big is Vy? So what we do is we use the geometry of this right angle triangle we have to find the magnitude of Vx and Vy, and then we're going to get the sign from the diagram. We can just look at the diagram and know that Vx is positive, it's in the positive x direction, Vy is negative because in the negative y direction. Okay, so let's see how we do this process. And we're going to use something that we call unit vector notation. Now, a unit vector is just something that has a length of one unit and points in a particular direction. So the unit vector x hat, x with a little hat on top of it, and you just call it x hat, has a length of one unit in the positive x direction. y hat would be a length of one unit in the positive y direction. Okay, so we'll worry about that in a few minutes. So what we're going to do is focus on finding the size of vx. Let's say we know what v is. It's got a particular length. So here we have a nice right angle triangle. We can use, just use the fact that cosine of this angle theta in the triangle is adjacent, that's Vx, over hypotenuse, that's V. So we rearrange that equation, and we find that Vx is V cos theta. Now the vector Vx has a magnitude of V cos theta, and it's also got a direction. It's in the positive x direction. So the magnitude is displayed there as b cos theta, and the plus x hat tells us that this vector is in the positive x direction. Do a similar thing to find vy, only now we use sine instead of cosine, because sine is defined as opposite, that's vy, divided by hypotenuse, that's v. You rearrange that, so the vector vy has a magnitude of v sine theta, that's just rearranging the sine theta equals vy over v equation, and its direction is given by minus y hat. It's in the negative y direction. We can put this all together to say that the vector v is the vector sum of its components, vx plus vy added as vectors, and that would be plus v cos theta in the x direction minus v sine theta in the y direction. So that's how we use vector components. Okay, let's go on and just spend a few minutes on uh, just the start of motion. And we talk about distance. So motion, something is moving. So it travels a particular distance when it moves. So distance is a scalar quantity, doesn't have a direction, and it just represents the length of the path moved by some object. Displacement is a vector, and we define this a little more formally, so it represents a change in position. The magnitude of the displacement is the straight line distance between the start and end points, and the direction points from the starting point to the ending point. That's how you find the direction of your displacement vector. 
So often, let's say we're working in the one dimension on the x-axis. So we'll start with some initial position, we'll call that xi. And we move to some final position on the x-axis, we'll call it xf. The displacement in this process we call delta x. Delta is this little triangle symbol in front of the x. Whenever you see delta x, that always represents a change in some quantity x. So here we have the change in x. x is position. So a change in a quantity is always the final position, final value minus the initial value. So in this case, delta x, the displacement, is the final position, xf, minus this other vector, xi. We're going to work with this in one dimension to start with. We'll talk about some other things in the next few days as we work through motion. Uh, but you can also generalize this to more than one dimension. You can have delta y's and delta z's if you have two and three dimensions. Or even a single vector in three dimensions. We have all that r, so we'll have delta r is rf minus ri. Okay, so that's it for now. See you in class.